We are distracted. There's just no denying it. Our attention is the most important asset we have, and whether we're distracted by our environment, the device in our pocket, or what we think we may be missing out on, that attention is always being vied after. When it's time to practice, keeping that attention focused is the goal. And that, well, that is easier said than done. After all, the average person gets distracted every 90 seconds or so. Your phone buzzes, an email comes in, or something else pops into your head. It seems completely inescapable. So what can we do to keep engaged in the process and allow ourselves to really enjoy the deep work required of us? This is the big question when it comes to getting the most from our often limited time practicing. In the book, Manage Your Day Today, Build Your Routine, Find Your Focus, and Sharpen Your Mind, best-selling author Seth Godin shares, the strategy is simple, I think. The strategy is to have a practice, and what it means to have a practice is to regularly and reliably do the work in a habitual way. There are many ways you can signify to yourself that you are doing your practice. For example, some people wear a white lab coat or a particular pair of glasses or always work in a specific place. In doing these things, they are professionalizing their art. What Seth is suggesting is that we design a cognitive association. When I do this, it means it's time for that. I have found this idea to be very helpful in my own work. With this in mind, I'd like to share with you a three-step strategy to have practice sessions that are more productive and leave you feeling energized and not drained. Step one, remove distraction. If we're going to signal to ourselves that it's time to work and distraction is the problem, then we should really consider using a time to work signal which also eliminates those distractions. So when it's time to practice, send a signal that combats the itch we've all been conditioned to scratch. Put the phone or tablet in airplane mode or better yet, well out of reach. A 2017 study at the University of Texas at Austin concluded that the mere presence of a cell phone when working reduces available cognitive capacity and impairs cognitive function. So whenever possible, this would be the most important distraction to ditch. It really can be that simple. Step two, optimize the space. Everything you need should be within reach. If we stop because we need to get an item, we can all too easily fall prey to distraction. With everything nearby to support our work, there's less opportunity for us to break focus. For me, this means having reeds, metronome, tuner, a pencil, and of course all my music nearby. Everything is within arm's reach, so I never have to move away from where I'm working. Now, I have the benefit of practicing in the same spot most days. But in my days as a student, I kept everything I needed in my case, so it was ready to come with me to whatever space I was practicing in that day. With so many folks using tablets now, it's even easier to have what you need on hand thanks to all of those apps. But don't forget, airplane mode, no distractions. Step three, practice sprints. A great way to regain your productivity is with a sprint of uninterrupted time to work. I call these practice sprints. A big component of capitalizing on the sprint is to be clear about setting attainable goals and work through them with specific action items. I find writing them down to be a great help as a way to visualize what's on the docket and how to manage the time that I've given myself. With our distractions turned off or silent, our space optimized, and our goals and action items clear, it's time to start the clock. One hour, starting now. Remember, a practice sprint can expand or contract to suit the time you have and how you're feeling. If this idea is new to you, I'd suggest starting small. 10 minutes can be more than enough to get things going and allow you to get a sense for how a sprint feels. As you get comfortable, you can gradually increase the time. I typically do about 60 to 90 minute sprints as my schedule allows. This is the perfect block of time for me to get a lot done and feel good about the work that I've put in. After each sprint, have a little break before diving in again or moving on to the next thing in your schedule. The strategy is indeed a rather simple one, but the results speak for themselves. You can tweak the process in a way that suits you to further optimize your time and to enjoy the ability to work deeply without distraction. I find writing them down to be a great way. See, my computer just dinged. <laughs>